just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, brought to you by Bloke Beer, the beer of rugby league, the beer of Australian sport. Get in your local, grab a case of an easy drinking lager. We've got the mid-strength as well. But I'm uh, very excited to uh, introduce... It says Joshua Curran. Yeah. Can I call you Joshua? That just makes me feel like, I don't know, there's something about the Joshua. Nah, uh, yeah, you can do it, but <laughs> I always get called Joshua from mum and dad when I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How you going, brother? No, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm um, enjoying Sydney. Um, yeah, pre-season's been uh, pretty hard, but no, enjoying it, man. Loving it back here. And what's the, you know, the break been like after such an incredible year of the Warriors? And, you know, you, when you have those years where you're flying and it, it kind of all ends... It's very different to when you have those years when you're struggling and it ends. It's almost like you want it to end, whereas the year when you're flying, you're like, you never want it to end kind of thing. Yeah, it was um, – after the season, it was kind of weird because all, everything was um, – had obviously had my season uh, season review. Then, um, yeah, everything was kind of up in the air. Uh, we got a bit homesick um, and, uh, yeah, just being away from family. Obviously, it's only three hours away, but then – Put in context, like, got to be at the airport three hours early. It's kind of like a whole day. Mm. So, um, no, it was kind of a weird one. And, um, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, bro. Um, I loved it. Like, I loved my time there. And um, the last year, yeah, last year was crazy. Mm. You know, just getting that um, little finals taste. Um, the How far we went into finals is, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, was, it was sick. And um, hopefully we can take it into this year. Um, it's just such a different ball game, and yeah, we loved it. It's uh, so Webby arrives at the Warriors, obviously, you know, this year or end of last. Year. Well, fuck, we're twenty four now. But when Webby arrives, the first few sessions or the first couple of weeks, could you have imagined the season? You know what I mean? Because it wasn't the thing with the Warriors season compared to other clubs that had a really good season. Like you basically had an entire country get behind you. Like it was mm. genuinely like a movement. Could you, did, was there any hint of something special about to come or not really? Oh, uh, well, after the 2022 season, we came, yeah, we had a shocker year. I think we went maybe won like seven games. 14th, I think. Yeah. It's finished so, 14th or something like that. Yeah, when we were living in Brisbane, in that, um, obviously, yeah, Sean, didn't have his best year and he, he'll be the first one to say that. Mm. Um, but honestly, that was just because he was away from family. He mm. had his young girl. Um, yeah, they're just away from family. But, um, yeah, went back to New Zealand and, um, yeah, it was pretty crazy, man. Like, obviously, they got Mitch Barnett coming in. We had a couple, um, just a couple of them older heads come in. Mm. And, bro, right, Webby came in and just set, like, pretty much the benchmark and um, ca- um, just everything. So everyone bought into it, bro. And from day one, um, we just attacked today. It, eh? it was um, pretty crazy. Everyone just put their um, head down, ass up and... Um, attacked you and we just said um, if we can g- win more games and what we had to do if we just get the uh, simple stuff right then we'll be sweet mm. and um, yeah we we pretty much um, yeah killed it that year yeah, crazy what 15. 15 so 15th all the way to top four mm. that is crazy um, I remember watching uh, a trial actually of your pretty much your your resis like the trial the week one or two and just going I think there's something different about the Warriors this year compared to, to you know yesteryear and then the next trial rolled around um and sure had like a barry crocker first 20 minutes and then he kind of pulled it all together did you what did you feel in the first kind of few weeks as a team as a squad yeah um i think i don't know trials are a weird one for me yeah. eh? like it's you, you get so keen because footy's there then um it, it's a trial you're getting your match fitness the trial one's pretty much just all the young boys like just um, and mm. the new guys, yeah, we we versed Tigers and we put a clinic on. I remember mm. Marcy absolutely, like, just putting a clinic on. He he um, killed it then. We had a good vibe then. Uh, we had, new, oh, no, Storm. Mm. And, um, yeah, we'll be um, just all over the place. But, um, yeah, we just, we knew we were sweet when round one came. We knew, yeah. um, we, we knew what we had to fix, obviously. Uh, done the review on it and trained it, but um, no, it's good, man. We the vibes were good heading into round one. We knew we had to go down to Wellington and um, come up against Newcastle, and um, they're not an easy team. But um, yeah, no, the vibes were good. We yep. we knew what went wrong, and um, yeah, tra- I don't know. Charles are a bit weird for me. It's just yeah. like one of them things, just getting your game fitness up and obviously getting your combinations and um, 
yeah, you can be as fit as you want, but game fitness, man, it's it's crazy. It's eh? different. Like you could genuinely feel like before game the first trial, you could feel like I'm I'm gonna absolutely <laughs> rain it. Like my times compared to last year are way better. I'm stronger. I'm this. I'm I'm fully fit. And literally first five minutes, you're done skis. Right. I remember there was a trial there. I played the first twenty minutes, and I looked up, and I was just like. Far out, man. <laughs> I still another 20 minutes at half time. Yeah. But, um, nah, yeah, it's just different. You, like I said, you can be the fittest guy, but game fitness is, like, just completely. I reckon it takes you about five, like, five games to actually get your, like, yeah. game fitness um, up to scratch. So. For sure. For sure. It's, um, I reckon what's weird about game fitness is there are some guys that, like, are super fit in training drills, and there are some guys that are busted, like, honestly, at the back, like, just terrible at fitness. They get in a little game, they have 30 scoots, <laughs> and you're going, where, I don't understand. It's, like, so different, the fitness. Yeah, I know. I, it, it make, it's crazy, man. Some game, some guys are just game fit, like, proper game fit, mm. and then some guys are fit at training, then kind of not struggle in that sense, but um, obviously it takes them a couple of games to get um, their game fitness up, but, yeah, bro, it's, it's crazy how um, much game fitness is actually like changes stuff hey yeah it's just a different like for example a good example would be a guy like brian toll so a bio reports from him himself he reckons he's at the back of fitness <laughs> now i've never trained at penner so i wouldn't know but he, he, the amount of work he gets through in a game yeah. is crazy like crazy fitness i know it's um yeah he's taking freaking like two carries a game <laughs> and that like the contact every time he like there's one thing like just doing the running fitness, then there's the contact, then there's the winning of the contact, then there's the finding your front, then there's the quick play of the ball. Like that's all extra energy. Yeah, it's there's so much into actual football than like catch pass tackling. It's it sounds easy. If it was that easy, I feel like everyone would be playing football, but there's yeah. actually like so much like technical stuff. Mm. Obviously, yeah, if you lose a tackle, you gotta win the momentum back. Or if you don't win that momentum back, then man, you're just on your front foot and you're just gassed. Yeah. But um yeah, there's so much into actual football. And if you go into like each tackle or like even like just a simple catch pass, mm. like it's just right, it's just all technically um just crazy. Yeah. And even like the little things that people don't see like uh you know, in contact. The wrestle on the ground, little things you can do to like get your hands stuck in there. That's what frustrates me so much sometimes when I see like refs and they're like, like they'll, they'll call out and look, uh, refs I know they got a super hard job, but they'll call out milking, milking, and I'm like, bro, are you serious, milking? He's and the and the defender's like, oh, I don't know what's do, don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, bro, we're talking about an explosive athlete that can like lift 150 kilos on his off his chest, squat eight 180, but he can't get his hand out of the friggin' tackle. Yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy, bro. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just friggin' so I, I know like I've seen some um, bad tacklers, mm. but they know how to win on the ground, and slow it down, mm. and like um, just like all the small technical stuff that can like you don't win a tackle, but you know what to do on the ground to get that momentum back. It's yep. just, bro, there's so much into it. Yeah, it's just absolutely. like that's why we always build over preseason, like. Mm. Like it, it does look easy in season, like our schedule. But over preseason, man, it's it's fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, mate, absolutely. It's uh, it's funny. I was actually when I came into rugby league, we didn't do wrestle the first year. So like the wrestle, so this would have been I think two thousand four, five, and then I was there when wrestle first got introduced. So <laughs> like the shock in that was like. Like we're, we're actually wrestlers now. Like one of our trainers was a K1 fighter. Yeah, right. And like now that's normal to have like a UFC yeah, yeah, fighter yeah. as a wrestler, like a coach or whatever. Yeah. Whereas back then we were like, why is a K1 fighter? His name was Hazy, he was a legend. Um, why is it, we're playing rugby league and we're getting taught how to bloody, you know, this is about, obviously it's just part of the game now. Um, so this year you, you finish fourth and you know, it, the, the whole, you know, country gets behind you. When do you reckon it clicked? When did you guys know we're not just on a bit of a run here. We actually are a high quality footy side that can do something this year. Um, I think it was actually early in the season. I think we I think we could have won like six in a row, maybe, I think. Mm. And, um, or maybe it was like four, or f it's either four or six, but like we knew if we done, if everyone done their job, we knew that we could um, go a long way. Mm. Um, we, yeah, we, it, it, I guess I wouldn't say it clicked. It's just like we all knew, like if we done our small jobs, mm. um, 
then we, we gave everything the best chance to win the game and I know like Sh- Shawnee had honestly his best year like yeah. dead set his best year mm. but um, yeah we knew if everyone done their own job got everything sorted then yeah we'll sweet so I think it's yeah maybe we won four games in a row but um, yeah we just all knew that we had something building there then yeah man I'd tell you what like playing at Mount Smart in mm. full crowd it was yeah it was crazy like running out lights are there's like a little light show it's just like everyone singing their song it was honestly it's actually probably the best stadium to play at like yeah i'm ex- actually i'm really ex- i'm really excited to go back there just mm. to see the crowd and i don't know it's gonna be weird being on the opposite side and um in the away sheds but no i'm excited to go back there it, it will be cool yeah i loved playing at mount smart i really did look i did i play that well at mount smart <laughs> probably not um <laughs> but i've got a good memory of it maybe the fans don't they got a shit memory over there they didn't love me playing at mount smart um no i love playing at mount smart i think i don't know there's it's just a very unique ground like it's it's a big big enough capacity to make it feel big um but it's not it's not a typical stadium. I don't know if it's been upgraded since I played, but that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, it's. I think it holds. I don't know, maybe 20, twenty-seven. Then mm. they had an All Blacks game versus um, South Africa, and they put um, where the hill was. They put more uh, oh, seatings yeah. there, so it made it like I think it was like thirty, thirty-one thousand. But man, that thirty-one thousand felt like sixty thousand. Like the crowd was just always in it, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's such a hard like. When other teams went there, I was actually thinking like, man, this is like would be one of the worst trips for them. Like you always go in there, it's either raining or if you play an eight o'clock game. And like where their stadium is, it's like all in like industrial area. Mm. So um yeah, it, it's a it would be a hard trip, but um now I'm on the opposite side. So Love like it. I'm excited to um experience it from the other side. I remember like in the twenties days you'd fly in the day before, then fly out straight away, but mm. um yeah, it's a bit different. Um, 20 mm. NRL. So, um, shout out to what makes the stadium so good. What is it? The Joker? What's it? Mount Smart Joker? Mount Smart Joker. S- Spiral Boys. Spider Boys. Spiral Man. Yeah. Any other people we got to shout out to them in the, in the stadium? Shuey. The Shuey. Shuey oh guy? yeah, the Shuey bloke. He got in trouble. I know. Outrageous. I, I was going about to say un Australian, but very un Kiwi. <laughs> un Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, so you you win those games. Uh, I guess what's it like seeing a guy like Sean Johnson? What I love about Johnson, Sean Johnson's journey is that if you had seen him at the start of his career, I don't think many of us would have said by the end of his career, he's actually going to be a completely different player and almost like uh, a puppet master, you know, of creating space around him without his footwork. Yeah, it's actually right. what he's, he's, he's thinking. He's, um, yeah, he's honestly, I, I don't know how to explain him, bro. He... He he can see a play before a play. I, I, I don't know. It's just he made my job easy. So I actually like um, yeah, it's probably two years now. Like I literally when he got the ball, I knew it was what he was going to do, yep. and when he knew what I was going to do. So um, I think that's why we <coughs> had that good combination with each other. Mm. Like he trusted me, I trusted him. If he told me to get somewhere, I'm getting there straight away. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. He's just. He he made he probably made the year easier last year because mm-hmm. he was going so good. But yep. um, yeah, man, he the the small stuff he does around the game, like guiding the team around, kicking game, but like just like I don't know, getting on the left post and we're setting up for a for a um, shape out the back there and just right, he's just he, I don't know, man, he's just freakish. Yeah, it was so good to watch and like what an incredible well-rounded career like you you can almost watch two versions of sean johnson you can go and watch the highlights of him leading the team to a grand final and go mate this guy is but the downside of a guy like that usually is they they rely on that for the rest of their career so when they get older they can't do it because they're not as explosive whereas what's beautiful about sean johnson is he just went oh, okay so i'm not as physically explosive so i'm just going to completely round out my game in the other side i yeah, just think 100%. it's so cool so cool. Okay, so you're going, you're on the run. You make the top four, the first final against Penrith. What was the feeling like going into that? Now, and I don't want to be, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anyone, but going into it, because I think Sean Johnson obviously pulled out before the game, injured. Yeah. Um, I guess the feeling from a fan, myself, I was kind of like, the Warriors going into this, maybe thinking, thinking towards week two, but I'd love to know what, Really, you guys were thinking heading into such a big clash in Penrith. Yeah, so um, Shawnee, it, Newcastle game, he got... Oh, no, not the Newcastle game. The 
I don't know, whoever reverse round 24 or mm. whenever the season finishes, um, yeah, he tweaked his calf. Yep. And um, it, he was like a yes and no. Like, it was, he was training. Oh, he didn't actually train with us the whole week. Then the following week when we reverse leading up to Penrith, um, he, he done a bit just by himself, but mm. he done captain's run. Then um, he just, yeah, he just, he just didn't pull up good. He just, he said, no, nah, like, I'd rather not play then get halfway through halfway through the game and say if we did lose then he's out for week two of yep. the finals so um yeah he just said not nah, like i'm just gonna pull the pin boys but mm-hmm. then you also had walks there which is he's yeah he's a freak himself but yep. um yeah we all we also had that combination with walks and t um they always played with each other and mm-hmm. um throughout the year and yeah we honestly we had full faith like we had um we, captain's run i remember tall who's just like mate like boys don't um don't put your heads down like we, we can still win this like 100 mm. percent. Mm. and to be fair we're actually going toe-to-toe with them um at the start uh we made a couple of mistakes but i think that's just um i know we're just kind of overplaying instead mm. of like just doing our job but um yeah we had full faith got leading into it obviously we knew shawnee was out and um yeah he's a big loss but mm. um we had full faith in t and walks um to do the job as well so mm. Was it the Newcastle game or was it which game did you dislocate your finger with was it a try saver or pulling a guy back into the try try line? Which game was that? Uh, that was the week two of the finals. Yeah, okay, so anyway, so I'll get to that. Um okay, so you you you, you lose to Penrith and then it's like the pressure cooker of not only is it an elimination game, it's an elimination game, you know, at Mount Smart. And rightly or wrongly, unfairly, if you were to lose that game, it would end on such a bitter yeah. note for New Zealand, even though that's so unfair. You got to week two of the finals. What was yeah. that pressure like that week building into it? Um, I don't think we actually had like, we didn't feel like, a, we didn't look at it as an elimination game. Obviously mm. we knew it was like yeah. do or die, but we actually looked at it as like a, just a normal game. Eh? Okay. Like we said, fuck, we're here back at Mount Smart. Like this is probably the like perfect scenario. Like, going into the crowd playing in front of the, our hometown like we haven't been in finals for i don't know whatever six years or whatever it is mm. then um yeah it's probably like the perfect um situation scenario and we just all said like just looked at each other in the eye and just said like let's let's do it a eh? mm. then um yeah man we went out there and freaking that was incredible because the week before newey had almost like you know nearly crumbled yeah. at, because of the pressure of a home ground yeah um, whereas you guys didn't, you guys looked like you were almost, not almost, you were definitely playing better because it was the pressure of a home ground. Yeah, bro. Right. Like that, like I said before, that crowd was like the crowd just on the back of us. Like you can honestly feel it on the field. Like yeah. you can, they do not stop from the siren to the finish. Eh? Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy. And, um, yeah, all the people that you said, like even them spider wire people, like, they, you run out and like you just see this big <laughs> row of red in spider-man kit like yeah. i was actually running out laughing i'm just like man like this is actually <laughs> so sick hey eh? but um no nah, yeah honestly um yeah the crowd puts a lot of pressure on the away team eh? like yep. it's just um it's so hard to gain that momentum mm. when you're the away team playing yeah obviously week two of the finals about playing at mount smart it's mm. eight o'clock at night and you got the crowd like absolutely just riding you. Yeah. So, yeah. Now it was cool, man. We, um, yeah, we, 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 um, stuck to our process that game and, um, mm. yeah, we bloody killed it. Eh? It's, uh, yeah, that was an absolute clinic. I know knew we kind of bounced back in the second half to a degree, but it was, it was probably your best performance all year yeah. um, as a team. Uh, so yeah, the, I guess the siren goes, you win. And what's that feeling like, you know, you're about to head to Brisbane to play the, the mighty Brisbane Broncos. It was a relief, but also like, it was exciting, eh? Like, mm. we're just like, oh my God, like, we're one game away from the grand final. Like, you, you think that, but then you can't think that at the same time. Yeah. But um, yeah, once that siren went, we're just like, all right, we got another week in here. And mm. then, um, yeah, man, it's, yeah, all the boys were just happy as they, mm. mainly to get the win in front of them, in front of the crowd. And um, yeah, that, that I know the country was behind the worries that year and um well, speaking yeah, of the country cool. being behind you what was the craziest thing that you can remember going wow like this is next level of support um oh just everything man like you go to the shops and like 
your shop would be like an hour shop because everyone's just like it's so cool like everyone's coming up to you mm. asking for photos and just talking to you but um yeah the support we actually got outside of the actual ground um yeah it, w- it was mad it was i'll tell you what made me was when they were getting blind tattoos <laughs> that's when i was like <laughs> whoa oh, yeah that's right and, um, <laughs> what yeah, the yeah, yeah. hell is going on yeah, here no, that's right yeah that was crazy we um that was all over social media and all the boys were just like man that's actually <laughs> that's actually nuts, hectic eh? <laughs> even like even when we versed brisbane um and we went to suncourt we had like a bay it's just mm. like this corner that um it was just loud as like you, there was i don't know how many people there were but like brisbane suncorp stadium's just it's all Brisbane fan. It's yeah. so hard to play there. Yeah. But we had this one corner that just supported us and like you could honestly hear them. Yeah. I think when early in the year, um, it could have been Shawnee's 200th game for the club. Mm. They had, they played Para at Para Stadium mm. and um, I was suspended. And they reckon when they were actually out on the field, like the Warriors fans were out cheering like the Man, I remember that game. Who was that? The Titans? No, nah, that was Para game. The oh, Para game. Happened at the Titans. The game Titans well. game. You I've literally never, were out cheering. I've never heard a home team run on the field and get booed, <laughs> bro. There are so many Kiwis on the Gold Coast. It's actually a joke. Yeah, I know. Like, we need like, to look into that shit because <laughs> bro, these are taking over my hometown. We, we we ran out, and it was like the loudest cheer. And Titans ran out, and it was bo- like they proper got booed. Bro. <laughs> I know, bro, I was like, what? oh my god, what <laughs> is going on, bro? That actually was insane. I mean, like you would hear calls. And usually like the call would like a cheer would come out, but it was like a boo and you're like, bro, Titans just got like a, you know, a, a call for them or whatever. So yeah, that, that was actually wild and shows you the one thing that, um, that I, you know, obviously was a short student at the Warriors, but one thing I'll give them, if you're going bad, the Warriors fans, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, you know about it. Trust yeah. me. But if you're going good, it is unbelievable yeah, support. Yeah, no, it's so sick. It's, um, I don't know, you kind of, uh, I don't, uh, you kind of feel like God's over there, but like mm. without sounding like cocky or anything, yeah. like you, um, the fan base, I don't know, like they just kind of rev you up that much where you just like go out there each week and just want to pretty much play the game, obviously because of yourself and you want to win, but mm. also you pretty much got a whole country behind you. Yeah. Um, you want to do them proud as well. Like there was union people. That's when like All Blacks lost a couple of games or something. There was union people converting over to rugby league to watch us play like yeah um yeah the numbers we got from obviously union to league was i think it was big man yeah absolutely i remember so because the year before i went there i think they made the prelim or they went really well and so our trial match got a bigger crowd than the auckland blues round one match or something like yeah. an actual it was yeah so it's just crazy just crazy um okay so yeah the game you roll into the brisbane game you know brisbane they're such an interesting I'd assume they're an interesting team to do video on because you watch the video of the highlights, you're going, holy, like, what do we, how, the, how do we stop mm. that? But at the same time, they make a lot of errors. So yeah. you can grind them out of games. What yeah. was it like heading into that game? Um, yeah, we, we knew what we were actually up against. So obviously you got their forward pack, mm. Paddy, Flegler, Payne. Um, we just said if we, if we can um, take it to them, then we, we've got a good chance. Then you got their outside backs, obviously. Jesse Arthur's, Walshy, mm. um, Ezra Man, just like all the fast people. And we pretty much just said, if we stay in our system in defence, then we won't have an issue. And I remember leading into that game, we, we trained, we actually trained pretty good. Um, then obviously flew over there, um, came game day, we we're, were all pumped and we we're all pretty calm. Um, heading to the game, I'd never heard a bus be so quiet in my life. Like, no, really? it was like, um, you just knew like everyone was. It's and, on. Yeah, it's on. And yeah. I don't know, it was a bit weird for me because like on game days, like you got people listening to music and full serious, but um, on game day, I'm pretty chilled, man. Like I okay. I like to muck around, or not muck around, but like have a bit of laugh, like mm. just um, like I'll think about football when I'm putting my socks on. Yep. But to lead up to that, I'm just like, all right, um just try to stay calm like mm. obviously think about my job a little bit but i don't play the game before the, i actually play the game mm. so um yeah i was i was actually probably pretty quiet that game because i um not that game that lead up to that game because i just knew like how intense like the boys were and how mm. serious they were and um yeah so 
we actually started strong. We mm. I remember we, we were leading maybe ten nil or something. Mm. I remember Dow took that intercept, um, and yeah, we actually we actually rattled them. Then yep. I don't know, just our errors, man, just got us. And look, for, uh, well, a pass that was allegedly forward. I'm not going to say it's forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it was forward. But I mean, look, I understand people's perception that it might have gone forward. Um, <laughs> when you, when that happened, Ten meters <laughs> were you like, "What the hell is going on? Like, uh, what?" Uh, I don't know, man. I I I don't know if to say something or not because I'll probably get in trouble. Yeah, but, okay, fair. Um, enough, fair enough. Well, I'll say it for you. That <laughs> we, was so yeah, forward we, as a joke. I feel, I feel like everyone knows. Like, <laughs> it's just, but like, Ben, what can you do? You yeah. you can't take it back. Um, but well, we needed. I don't know. That was probably yeah. Momentum change that. Yeah. That play, the momentum change, but. Also on the back of that, we um, we should have just. I think we held on to that moment for another ten minutes, and it just yeah, it just crumbled on us. We yeah. we didn't go. All right, well, do you know what? That's happened. Um, what's our next job now? Obviously, yeah. uh, we kick it down, keep them in there forty, make them kick out. But um, yeah, we probably held on to that moment, which was yeah, it was, it was crap. But mm. what can you do? Does it yeah. happen? You can't change anything. So, um, so obviously, <coughs> you just lose that game. What what did Webby say to you boys, um, you know, after that game? Um, fuck. All the boys are actually rattled, eh? Because um, we knew we knew we could have beat them. Um, we knew we let ourselves down, um, just like our errors and just yeah, that like that moment, you know what I mean? Um, but off the back of that, he just said, "Man, like well, I'm so proud of you boys. Like, you know, this is our first year. Um, and we we we." It's our first year we got next year to build. Yeah. And um, we came from 15th to 4th. So, um, yeah, all, all the boys we, all the boys were down. Um, it was pretty shit feeling. But then we kind of just said, you know what, now we build into next year. Mm. So, um, yeah, all the best to them. And see you around whatever round we have. <laughs> <laughs> so when did the discussion start for you? Because, what, and we spoke about it a bit on the podcast, it seemed like, it, w- it was so interesting your i guess um your season because you were good enough to be in the starting side but every it, you would sometimes start you would sometimes come off the bench when what was the reason for going to the bulldogs and when did that start i guess discussion yeah start? look um i everyone says like i had a good season but um i reflected on my season i even said it midway through the season i didn't have my best season mm. obviously I had some stuff going on outside of football mm. Um, that probably affected me a fair bit. Then once that got over it, I just, yeah, I just, I tried my best, but honestly, I just, for me, I know personally, I didn't have my best season. Mm. Um, I put uh, my 2022 season when I was playing lock second row. Um, that's probably my standard where I wanted to play. I was playing pretty much 80 minutes um, most games and um, getting the ball, making, I don't know, making a lot of tackles. But um, yeah, last year, honestly, I reckon my, yeah, it was a shit season for me. Mm. But um, we're saying that, yeah, I got a bit homesick. Um, obviously, all that stuff was happening outside of football and kind of made me realise um, that there's more actually to football. Like, obviously, I'm away from family. Um, then also, like, I was coming off the bench, which, like, I was, I was happy to, come, like, do my job. But, um, yeah, I was coming on with 20 minutes to go. And, man, like, it's so hard, like, just getting, the, like, the games were done. Mm. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd start some games and... Um, not start so I had the season um, end of season review and yeah Webby pretty much just asked me like what's wrong and I just said bro I just, to be honest I just want to go home mate like mm. I just said I'm not gonna lie um, missing family want to go home um, like I don't want to come back here mm. if I'm going to be playing 20 minutes like I just want to um, pretty much like build myself up again um, yep. I feel like I had a shit year and um, I know I'm not going to be able to get that opportunity here because we've got such good players, like which is which is such a good thing for the Warriors because they actually got a lot of depth, mm. which is um, also yeah good thing for the coaches to have that selection mm. issues. But um, just for myself, I think it was the best um, opportunity just to go home and um, you know build myself up again. Mm. Um, I always I was actually talking to Sarah the other day and um, he kind of asked me what my intentions were for this year. And obviously I told him my little goals and um, big goals, obviously, um, to play Origin. But mm. then you got to do small goals. I know if I can do my small goals, achieve them, um, it'll give me every opportunity to be in the talks for Origin or even like hopefully 
make my debut for Origin. Mm. But um, <coughs> obviously, I said to him like, I need to play good first and yeah. play consistent football. Mm. But um, yeah, man, I was just I just said to him like, I've kind of been recognised as like a he uh, he plays like a Boyd Cordner or he plays like a um, I don't know he plays like a Isaiah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. I kind of said to him like, that's that that's been mad. Obviously, when you first start up, but. Um, I'm kind of at the point and at the age where I want to be recognised as Josh Curran. Mm. Like, oh, like how good is that Josh Curran not? Oh, he plays like Boyd Cordner. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of got the opportunity to go over to um, Bulldogs. Had a couple other offers, but I think Bulldogs probably my um, best opportunity to make a statement for myself and, um, yeah, kind of put my name back out there again. Mm. And so did Webby, what was his initial reaction? Was it, mate, We'd love you to stay or was it look i understand let's work towards a, an agreement that suits us both what was the yeah he obviously said to me um yeah he, he would love me to stay um he, he didn't want to see anyone leave but um i kind of said to him yeah we, we he actually ran away and kind of thought about it and he's like all right you know what you probably we can do a mutual agreement if you can find somewhere where you're happy then mm. um i'm not gonna stop you yeah okay. so yeah it's, it's all part and parcel of football yeah. it's, it's a shit thing obviously like i'd love to stay back in nz for another year mm. um because i hate leaving contracts early i'm kind of being loyal mm. but um yeah honestly there's some things you just got to do for yourself and um yeah it's, it's what i've done i took, mm. uh, put myself first and I'm close to the family and I'm happy now, man. Like, I was happy, don't get me wrong, I was happy over there, but mm. it's just, I don't know, there's so much more to football um, outside of football. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, I think you're better off having the conversation early than going, oh, I want to be loyal, so I'm just going to stay, but I'm going to mm. be unhappy and play crappy footy. Um, now, it's a different, you know, conversation. If you can tell the club is, you know, wants you to move on, then it's then you both just have a chat. And, and you're gone and straight away. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, trust me. Um, but I guess, you know, you're better off, as I said, you're better off giving, you know, Webby or the club honesty as quickly yeah. as possible because then they can prepare for the future. Um, so signing with the Dogs, was that... Why did you sign with the Dogs? Um... Oh, probably because I, I know I probably got the best opportunity there to um, make a statement. Obviously, they're going through a rebuild stage. Um, they got Gus there. I've been through a rebuild stage at the Warriors. Mm. Um, and, I, yeah, I know if I can get that starting spot, I know I'm definitely going to take it with both hands and um, do whatever I can to make that statement again. And what position do you pref like hope to play? So I actually went on the market as a lock. So okay. Obviously, I can play lock back row, um, mm. but yeah, I said my main position is I want to be lock. Obviously, um, I want to get hands on the ball more, um, mm. kind of play that third half back. Obviously, linking with um, my halves, um, mm. but yeah, I, I went on the market as lock because I feel like that's probably the best position for me. Yep. Um, then, late say later in the game, um, I can go into second row, but um, yeah, locks are best position for me because I like ball playing but then also I like um, kind of just I don't know the attack kind of comes natural for me so I can look up and like if I see space I'm just going to take that space straight away mm. or um, yeah I can ball play and yep. get everything so the good thing about lock two is is that if the ball playing or whatever is just not on at the moment you can do you can get through work you can get through tackles you know you're just involved in the game yeah sometimes on the edge even though you're still getting through a lot of work, it's you can go periods of you know pretty yeah. quiet kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, obviously when you're playing back row and um, mm. I don't know, I can play both sides. But say if I'm playing a right back row and all the tack goes left yep. side, like you don't touch the ball much or yeah, like um, I don't know they they're attacking a half for some reason, so you don't make much tackles. Which yeah, you kind of don't get in the game as much as you do when you're a lock. So. Mm. Yeah, went on the market as a lock and um, yeah, I see myself as a lock. I feel like I play my best footy um, when I'm at lock. Then later in the games when um, fatigue starts to kick in, I can go to back row and um, run the line. So, yep. yeah. And so you said you're quite a chill, you know, when you go to games, you're quite chill and, you know, you like to enjoy yourself before the game. As a young fella, were you, was it always footy? Because sometimes when you you get those chill players that, they came to footy a bit late, you know, and they just kind of fell into it or was it always footy for you? Nah, yeah, it was always footy. Obviously, um, 
dad dad was a footy player he didn't he mm. never played um <coughs> nrl but um he played reggie's whenever back then i don't even know what it was called but yeah. he got up to new south wales cup um he was a foster boy he moved down to penrith um had my brother which is three years older than me he started football but um <laughs> apparently when i was young he used to always run away so, um, <laughs> run away i haven't heard that in ages yeah, no nah, like i used to run away like, to the telephone pole at the end <laughs> nah, of the street like, probably just like <laughs> i used to run a muck when i was young bro so like they actually used to put their phone number on my wrist like what? because yeah no nah, i used to proper run away man <laughs> like hell? um so dad um at the age of three dad just said do not stuff this and he actually threw me in football so i played my first football game when i was three years old with my brother is that was that to get energy out of you yeah it's just to get energy out of me because um i used to always go with dad into the dressing shed mm. um and apparently like whenever there was a footy game on i used to always run on the field when i was young <laughs> and um yeah dad just said you know what stuff this and just mm. gonna throw you into football yeah I, you know, I don't remember when yeah. i was three but um yeah so i played my first game of football when i was seen i was just around football since i was young yeah and, um yeah got to high school and kind of I didn't drop out. I'd done like a in-school apprenticeship because mm. I wasn't I wasn't a kid that enjoyed high school. Yeah, like I I loved the sports side of it, the fitness, all that side of it, but the actual learning of um, sitting down and just learning stuff that I wasn't interested in mm. it was that I struggled with that because I just couldn't sit down for an hour learning stuff that I had no interest in, which is just yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, when I hear people say, man, high school was the best, I'm like, high school sucked. <laughs> so did primary school. School sucked. I don't know. I, there was not a single day where I was like, this is cool. Yeah. I was like, this sucks, man. I think the only good day was when we actually played football, bro. Yeah, mate, I never liked, I don't get the whole, yeah, school was so good. I'm yeah, just like, bro, no, I hated school. Me neither. I, I, was in, I wasn't a school person. But um, yeah, I kind of didn't did you, drop. Did you excel um, early in league or did it take a while? No, I was I was um I was a freak when I was young. Yeah. <laughs> and, um yeah, I kinda was one of them kids that um stood out. Yeah, I yeah. I stood out without mm. sounding cocky and that I actually Well you yeah, did end up I, playing in a role, so it's kinda true. <laughs> <laughs> I um yeah, I stood out when I was young and um yeah, obviously I was a para junior. Mm. Um some stuff happened over there then uh went to roosters obviously uh roosters came on board they offered me a three-year contract full-time and um i idolized boy coordinator and um mm. yeah it was a no-brainer i yeah robo said that um like i'd boy coordinator would kind of like take me on his wing and just like i just i said yes straight away yeah when that contract came through i was like 100 percent, i'm going yep so were you a Roosters fan growing up or what, who was your yeah, team? Yeah, I was a Roosters fan because yeah, I loved okay. Boy Corden, I said. Oh, really? I just like every, everything he, how he defended, how he attacked. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just took everything what he done and just tried to put my game. He, he honestly went out to every game and played like his heart on his sleeve. Like, yeah. He, yeah, he, you could literally see how hard he played because he would come off the field and he just looked so exhausted. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of um the way i base my game is mm. around him it's funny because a lot of people forget boyd Cordner's early career he was like an attacking weapon on the edge and by the end of his career he was known for his toughness and yeah. getting through the hard yards but mate at the start of his career he was a weapon on the yeah. edge and he was obviously still a weapon um when he retired but he he was the heart and soul of all the tough stuff whereas yeah, when he was younger he was their attacking weapon yeah just the way he ran the holes um <clears throat> Yeah, he he was a freak, man. Still the best line runner in the modern era, in my opinion. Hundred percent, like percent. Right, him and Kiri, their combos, yeah, were crazy, man. Imagine being a center or a wide running forward or a half, just looking up, seeing Boyd kind of go, "Oh no, <laughs> inside shoulders yeah. getting ripped off today." Yeah, um, he, um, did, yeah. he actually had his first NRL trial as a sixteen-year-old. Yeah, I know. I heard this. He, he, I've heard the story about that. Yeah. Um, Apparently, yeah, he went down or something, and they, yeah, they said, yeah, you're playing or something. Yeah, sixteen Apparently years old, killed it as well. Yeah, sixteen. I think he's out at Penrith. Sixteen. That's crazy. Holy. Um, okay, so but let's take back to the teenage years. Did you make the rep sides in that? Yeah. So um, yeah, made all the rep sides. Um, fourteens, <coughs> Haramats, SG Bore, twenties. Yep. Um, then, yeah, I obviously back the school I went to, uh, Patricia Bellas. They kind of had a rule. You can't play 20s unless you play school football. Oh, really? And um, 
I was yeah, I wasn't a school person, but I wanted to complete school, but without doing my HSC. Yeah. So I done a in school apprenticeship. So I actually done plumbing. So I was um, I was pretty much plumbing all week. But if we had a school game, I'd go for training, then um, go play football, then pretty much go back to plumbing the next day. What? So you pretty much went out of school. <laughs> yeah, but I still completed school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, Done pretty much done my apprenticeship. I still got like a year left on the tools mm. uh, when oh, I finish. So did you complete your apprenticeship, the entirety of it? Yeah, so I've completed the taste um, part. The mm. practical part, I still got just one more year left of yeah, just okay. like just ticking off stuff. Like, do you reckon you could go back and do it now? Oh, bro, it's I haven't done plumbing in ages. But then <laughs> we're saying that like um, it kind of just like if I'm doing it, like I'll kind of still pick up on it. But yeah. like we're saying, I haven't, bro, I haven't done plumbing in I know since 20, 2019 or 2020. Oh, yeah. no, it would have been, yeah, 2018 was my last year. The boy, any so, boys ask you for some cashies? Mate, nah, come out, bro, I, I honestly wouldn't do it. Eh? I dead set, like, <laughs> I wouldn't do it because I, bro, I, it's been that long. I'd kind of, like, forget or everything. Yeah, for sure. No, I did um, my electrical apprenticeship, like, I don't know, would be like eight years ago now. And I got to the last year as well. And then obviously this, this started to go okay. Yeah. Um, mate, I couldn't do anything. But it, to be fair, all I did in my apprenticeship was pull cable, so it's like, yeah. fuck. It's, bro, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely hard. It's not easy. But um, I've, if, like, if I had to put a toilet in, I'd probably know how to do it. But, yeah. Um, Man, the most I learned doing my apprenticeship was how to use, like, tools and shit. Yeah. I always felt, like, less of a man that I didn't know how to do that shit. Bro, the, honestly, the worst <laughs> part, like, it's probably going to sound bad, the worst part is your first year of your apprenticeship. Yeah. It's just like that. It's like that first year in football, like yeah. you're just starting up and you're just, you're just that new guy and you're just like, fuck. Yeah, you've got some 40 year old <laughs> alcoholic making you walk 800 meters across a work site to get a fucking screwdriver. <laughs> bro, I didn't even, I didn't even, my first year, I was a plumber and I was a freaking gardener for my boss, bro. <laughs> I was like doing his hedges every day, weeding. I was just doing everything at his house, bro, because he was renovating his house mm. and like everyone would go out and like, actually learn how to plumb yeah but then i'm freaking he's like yeah mate you're with me today you gotta um yeah you're in the hedges bro they did the same oh, thing to me man. so we when we're at tafe i was um i was at the top of the grade or whatever yeah. for all the theory yeah so i'd get all the best marks for theory but you'd have guys there that could barely write a sentence <laughs> that were way better sparkies than me because yeah. they were wiring up houses and that yeah. at work whereas at work all i was doing was pull because like on our job site, I was the youngest and fittest, yeah. even though I was like 28 years yeah, old. Yeah. So they just go, oh, yeah, we'll just get you to carry, do all the hard shit, like yeah. the physical labor. Bro, I didn't learn anything, even though it was a good company to work for. It was a good company, to, but I did literally didn't learn anything. Yeah, bro, it's just, um, I don't know, it's that first year. Well, I did it for fucking, <laughs> I was a piece of shit for a few years. Maybe it's me, maybe I was a problem. Um, anyway, so you make a, so you're at the Eels, you're going through the Eels um, yep. junior system. Why didn't, you know, that, you know, I guess, why didn't you end up staying in the eel system and you went to the roosters instead um yeah like i said uh, boy coordinator like yeah. honestly mm. when um so pretty much i had they offered me a training oh not training child they offered me a pre-season with nrl when i was in 20s mm. and but if i didn't train i wouldn't have got paid then roosters came on with three-year deal full-time um boy boydo would take me on his wing yeah um just guide me around show me and I was just like, well, training, uh, pretty much training trial, like yeah. full time. If I don't uh, train, I don't get paid, or yeah. I got a three year deal with my idol. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm taking yeah, take that it every day of the week. Then, um, yeah, some stuff went down. It kind of went um, rocky when I said, yeah, I'm signing because I still had another year there, mm. but I wanted to finish that year. But then mm. it just, yeah, it didn't happen. It just went, yeah, downhill real bad. But then, um, as in you, the Eels relationship just kind of soured quickly, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, then I kind of got stuck in like this little hole where I wasn't actually really doing much, but I was still contracted to the Eels. Mm. And um, Roosters wanted me to get there, like get me over there like straight away to play 20s. Mm. And um, they just weren't releasing me. Then um, Nick Politis came on board mm. and um, my dad told me like Nick Politis is like talking to people. And I didn't know who Nick Politis was, so I wasn't a big like, like I don't really know like much football people, mm. and um, I was just like, oh, who, who's that? Then Dad's like, you serious, bro? <laughs> I was just like, oh, like, yeah, like who, who is he? And then um, 
he told me then obviously yeah he he had um words and a week later i got a real release no way but then yeah i obviously now know who nick politis is yeah king of nrl yeah so wow. um, um so do you remember maybe not necessarily first preseason with the first grade but what what's your biggest memory from your first preseason when you're rocking up going whoa um so i actually so yeah i played 20s first so i'd done uh because I was still in 20s, I had, uh, I took that 2017 contract and um, I trained with 20s first. Um, but we had a stacked team, eh? Mm. We probably had a stacked team. And um, there was, I kind of done a couple, I remember my very first session um, with grade, they said a couple of 20 boys are going to come up and train with us. Mm. And um, I remember my first session, I was like, all right, this was like probably my first opportunity. I actually, I can really make a, like, kind of just showing what I can do. Mm. I remember I was running like this line and I don't know, it just, bro, this gap just opened up and I just took this gap and Piercy hit me and <laughs> like, I don't know, they're just, like, oh, they were like, oh shit. Like, and um, as in you were surprised that, that like from the contact from Piercy or you're surprised that you got through the gap? No, nah, like that, I, they were surprised like I got through the gap. Oh, okay, like it's yeah. just, um, yeah, Piercy hit me oh, like, with, the, with ball. the ball. Yeah, Sorry. okay. He hit me with the ball and like, mm. I just ran this line, bro. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was pretty cool. But yeah. then that next year, I started full time. Yeah. And um, yeah, I kind of just um, took it with both hands, and I kind of just was watching Boyd the whole, mm. pretty much the whole preseason, see what he was doing. Hey, was there any moments of, um, you know, the physicality of first grade training, the, the wrestling, where you're like, yeah. oh shit, Jared? I remember <laughs> Jared. He he always has this. Like if you're a new guy, mm. he'll just, he'll come at you. Like yeah. your very first training session, he's coming at you with all these bumpers. <laughs> and I just remember, I just brace and just like hit him in the rib. I, I, um, I remember I hit him and he kind of, he knocked it on. And um, after that, he was just, yeah. Like, I think it's just like a see if, if you're going to sook or if you're going to yeah. have a dig. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, yeah, yeah, after that, it was, um, it was pretty sweet. Obviously, he still freaking ran at me, but um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of, guess he just sees like if you're a dog or not <laughs> yeah <laughs> um okay so you're you tra you try um training with the roosters um and you make your debut in 2019 yeah do you remember how that all come about yeah so um we we're going down to melbourne and robbo came up to me and said mate i'm just going to take you down to experience it be 18th man mm. and i was like yep sweet like sounds good no worries and um semi verils was debuting that game as well yep but he got told early mm. and um, went home, told mum and dad, like, um, going down with the team, we can 18th man. Um, and they're like, all right, so we'll book flights. And I was just like, oh, no, nah, it's all good. Like, they just, it's literally 18th just, man. yeah, 18th man. <coughs> it's for experience. They just want me yeah. to um, kind of build myself up into it, just experience how game day works, how it just all works. And um, went down to Melbourne and um, my roommate was Siwa. And he went to sleep. I remember it was just like I was, I was just soaking up, man. I was just like, "Whoa, this is like so, like so sick!" Like yeah. traveling with the boys, just being around the boys, even having dinner. I was just like looking around, like, "Man, this is, this is crazy." And you're eh? in. This is so. This is 2019. So this is the second year they won the comp. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I was just like, "Man, this is dead set crazy." Mm. Then, um, yeah, game day came around. See, so I woke up with a bad back and. Um, Lamy was 19th man. <laughs> you were rooming with Siwa <laughs> and he w woke up with a bad back <laughs> and you were yeah. 18th man. Look, <laughs> something's go uh, look, I'm not going to accuse anyone of anything. But um, <laughs> Lamy was 19th man and he's already played like a couple NRL games. Mm. And um, I didn't really think of it. And like, bro, he proper could, like, got up and just, I don't know what happened. He had, like, like those nerves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just could not move me. Yeah. And I was just like, man, like, you're all right. Like, mm. And like, I didn't even think about like any of it. I was just like so delirious, but I'm yeah. just still like soaking up, like freaking, this is so sick. Yeah. Then Robo came up to me and just said, um, mate, see why I like, got a pretty bad back. If he's like not sweet, you got a debut. Mm. And I was just like, oh yeah, sweet. Like no worries, mate. Like sounds good. And like, I was just like, oh, like you'll be sweet. Like it's an NRL game against Melbourne. And um, he came up to me as well. So he's like, bro, my back's pretty bad. Eh? Like mm. just, be ready. Mm. He goes, I'm going to have like an afternoon nap and see how I pull up. And I was just like, oh shit, like, all right, maybe V's telling me this, maybe something's actually going on here. Then um, 
bro, got to the stadium. I'd message mum and dad, sent it in the group chat. And I was just like, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I actually could be playing here. And mm. they were just like, what? Like, you serious? And I was like, oh, yeah, like my head's going all over the place at the moment. Then we got to the stadium, man. And um, I walk out, like just in the shed and that. I walk out to the field, first time being at Amy Park, and I was like, whoa, this is pretty mad. Like, mm. sick stadium. Obviously, you got the frigging seagulls on that one end. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is mad. Then CY comes up to me. He goes, oh, it was a pretty mad stadium, eh? And I was like, yeah, sick, man. Like, this is, like, this is epic. He goes, yeah, frigging um, so sick to play at. And I was just like, yeah, bro, it would be mad. But I didn't, like, still didn't think of anything of it. And um, I remember just, like, walking around, went down to the shed, Robbo came up to me, pulled me aside. He goes, mate, you're you going to be debuting? Mm. And my first, like, I didn't know what to say. I was just like, oh, like, yeah. And it's just all like, I just all sunk in. And I was just like, first thing I s said to myself, I was like, I said to him, I was like, oh man, like, thank you so much. And I said, but I was like, my mum and dad, like, that I need to tell them. Because mm. like, we had our phones off. He goes, oh, nah, Hardy. Um, it's already on the phone to him. Apparently yeah. dad was crying on the phone. <laughs> that, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I remember I went up to, like, none of the boys knew that I was debuting before mm. the, um, they got told in the team talk, but none of them knew before that. And I was going up to Kiri and I was just like, bro, like, what's this set? Like, what, what are I going to do here and that? And he's just like, look at me, he's like, bro, why the hell are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> then, um, obviously they got told in the team talk, he goes, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, makes he goes, sense. bro, you should have just told me because I'm thinking you're 18th man, like, <laughs> ask me these questions. <laughs> it's and, absolute punish. <laughs> like. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, bro. Then, um, yeah, bro, freaking ran out there and, um, bro, my best mate that I used to go to gym with, like I used to use his gym when, um, I was living out West, he was down for a box. No way. And he, bro, they had like a big, it was day two. They had a big Saturday. Yeah. And I told him I'm debuting and he goes, I had, a, I had like three tickets. He goes, bro, send me one of them tickets. I promise you I'll be there. And bro, he was, he was the only person there because he was on a box. I don't know. It just worked out like That's just mad. crazy. That's mad. And um, bro, he was so wasted. Like you could just, <laughs> you could, he was just, he was like a proper proud dad, bro. You could hear him in the stand just like, oh, I remember good. I was, um, ran out on the field like for warm, like for warm up. And um, I was just like, I could hear him <laughs> and I'd seen him. <laughs> And like I turned around, bro, and I went to like do like a little shuttle. But as I turned, I slipped over. Oh, <laughs> I was just oh, like, oh no. no! Oh no! But um, yeah, man, it was sick. It, it um, built up. I think I played like 15 minutes that game. But yeah, um, I remember my first carry. I got the ball and I looked up. I had Jesse Bromage, Cameron Smith, and um, and Nelson. And I was just like, oh. That is not good. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh. like honest. That could be arguably the three worst blokes you could maybe ever run at. Yeah, I was because like, even oh, if you win no. the contact, Cam's Can yeah. gonna win the wrestle. I was like, oh no. Then I was just like, I had, bro, I had that much adrenaline through me. I just ran it straight at them, and um, <clears throat> tackle went good. And Nelson's big boot, bro, he freaking kicked the ball, but it got called a knock on. I was just like, oh. Damn it. <laughs> oh, so you, oh, your first run you knocked on, but yeah, it was uh, he yeah. kicked the ball out of your hand. Yeah, but they just... Oh, no. They um, still caught a knock on. Yeah. All the boys got around me and um, yeah, nah, it was mad, bro. It was just like... Was this the one point game? Yeah, that's when Troll kicked like a frigging 45 meter field goal. From well, the like, what was that hot being on the field for that? Oh, bro, it was crazy. Right, yeah. I remember, um, yeah, first game and freaking going to Golden Point, I'm just like, I knew I wasn't going to get on. Yeah. I was just like, still like, I was like, this is so sick. Like, mm. this is... Like this, like couldn't be like a better debut, you know what I mean? <coughs> yeah. Um. Then Trelly kicked the field goal, and um. Yeah, we all went up and started cheering, man. Bro, that that field goal from Latrell. Like, when you actually go back and look at Latrell's career, it is actually insane. Bro, he's yeah, he's got the biggest boot on him. Like to think of a, we take it for granted that a guy as big and as athletic and explosive as him can also ball play and kick like a a half that's tiny, like. I'm trying to think of another player, but like even even GI, he still had ball playing, but he wasn't kicking. No. Like he like Trell's for Trell's ball play is like as good as a six, yeah. any six in the comp. He's um he's cut out balls, man. He can just it's a bullet. It's unbelievable. Um, what was it like um, playing with a guy like Cooper Cronk, seeing how he, you know, prepares and that. No, it was it was cool, bro. It was um I remember when I dropped that ball, he he came up to me and just said, um, he goes, mate, like, don't worry about it, it's your first run, like you're playing NRL. He pretty much just spoke to me, bro. He just like I remember because I was stressed and I was just like so angry that I dropped the ball and mm. he bro, he 
said a couple of words to me and just made me calm. And it's just like, all right, next job, bro. Like, it's all right. Yeah. It happens. And um, I was just like, oh, shit. All right. Yeah. Well, let's defend now. But, um, yeah, I remember just, <coughs> yeah, I, I was lucky to enough to play with Coops, mm. um, Jared, um, and also, like, Boydo. Like, it was, yeah, yeah, it was so sick. It's, uh, it's interesting how, like, different processes for different teams. Like, I remember when I was coming through the Bronx, if you dropped a ball your first run, <laughs> you're not getting it. It's okay, bro. <laughs> you're getting that. You, what are you doing, you bum? Bro? Yeah. Um, and look, maybe that's a, a bad thing. I don't, I don't know, but it is different how, like, different clubs deal, have different uh, types of leadership. Yeah. Because, um, like, what you want to hear is from the senior player, which yeah. is Cooper Cronk. You yeah. want to hear him say, it's all good. Because if he comes to you and says, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you're even, rattled. Yeah, you're even more rattled. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so, yeah, you make your debut for the Roosters. Um, I guess, I guess, what was the decision for, because then, were, were you a part of the extended squad at all for the grand final? Or you kind of, you made your debut and then you went back into Resi's? Yeah, so I made my debut then... Um yeah, went back into Reggie's. Um, then, yeah. bro, they had like, I kind of had to think about it. They had Boyd Cordner, Angus Crichton, Satili, Nat Butcher, and I was like the fifth string. Yeah. Um, second rower. Mm. So I was just like, uh, a couple of weeks later, Warriors, that's when Warriors came on board. Mm. So I um, went back to Reggie's for a couple of weeks and mm. um, Warriors came on board. And, bro, I literally, I got told on the. When was it? I got told on like a Friday and I had to make a decision before Sunday. As in Warriors? To move, yeah, to move country, oh, to go wow. to Warriors. And I was just like, bro, first like living with mum and dad, first time moving away from home. Yeah. Moving three hours away. I had like a literally 48 hours to make a decision. And bro, it was probably one of the most stressful 48 hours of my life. Eh? Yeah. Like I'd literally going to bed, like not being able to sleep, just my mind's running through it. Then... um. Yeah, I pretty much made a decision to go over there, bro. Yeah. And was it because of opportunity? Yeah, it was because of opportunity again. And um, I got a couple more games. That I think I played maybe five games that year. Of uh, reserve grade? Of NRL. NRL. So, um, yeah, went over there. and uh, in Oh, as in you played for the, the Warriors? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Um, yeah, went over there and in total probably played one, one NRL for Roosters and four games that year with Warriors just to... Yeah, okay get a okay. um, little taste of it and they said 2020 was going to be like pretty much the year where they want me to excel yeah then yeah and then COVID hits and then COVID hits bro oh, and so when COVID hit did you come back to Australia could you or you nah, could get in the so country so we were um, I don't know I don't remember because we had that there was like six how long how many weeks off there was like six to eight weeks off or something yeah, like that wasn't it, there did it hit oh it hit round one eh yeah like around round one or two and yeah. then and then everyone had like six to eight weeks off around that. Did you head home yeah. in that or did you just nah, have to nah, stay in New we Zealand? We had to stay in New Zealand. So <sighs> what happened? So the whole preseason I was um training as back row. Mm. And bro, literally about three weeks out or oh no, four weeks out from round one, bro, I pinged my calf. Oh, okay. And I'd done it like I'd done the Slayus mm. and um Bro, I was just like, No way, like this is not happening. Yeah. And um I remember I just tried everything to get back. Remember the week of it, um, I had a run and um, I just, bro, I dead set couldn't run. So I, yeah. I didn't get picked for round one. And um, that's when COVID started happening. I remember the boys stayed, they played round one. And I think they played, yeah, they played round one. Then they played round two against Canberra out mm. of Seabus. <coughs> and that's when everything got shut down. Yeah, okay. For about, yeah, eight weeks. And so they did they fly back to New Zealand then? So they flew back to New Zealand. Then um, yeah, we we're just like we're like what the hell is happening? So what was that that for you, like for you personally? Because you're over in a you know everything's locked down. You can't leave the bloody house. You got no family. No, you got mates, but relatively new mates, like six yeah. or seven months old mates. Oh well, my best mate that was um, out the roosters with me in twenties. He was at Warriors, Jacko Fry. So I was living with Jacko Fry and Kyle Lawton. Okay. So it was actually like that's all I, right, yeah. I still had like people yeah. there. If I was living by myself, yeah, it would have been terrible, bro. Yeah. But um, yeah, I had I had my two best mates there, so it made it um, we just yeah, it was easy. But we we're just like what like what the hell's happening? Like mm. the game just got caught off for nine or eight to nine weeks, and we we're just like freaking. It was just all up in the air, bro. Mm. And then um, we we're, were still training, 
but I remember we couldn't actually train together. It's such a weird time thinking yeah. about it now. Oh man, so bizarre. Like, but, and that we actually, you know, you, you think about the crazy, you know, the Spanish flu or all the crazy things that happened over a <laughs> hundred years ago. Like, bro, we went through that shit. Like, we, <laughs> we went through our own version of this, like, bizarre... I know. Man. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. But then, um, we yeah, we pretty much had to... The Warriors had to pretty much move the everything um, to Oz, but their <coughs> partners, I remember their partners couldn't come. So, bro, we, I reckon I've moved about 15 times over the last torture. four years. Eh? Moving is torture. Oh, it's... Honestly... If I capture a prisoner of war, I'm just going to make him move each week. <laughs> bro, honestly, I'm, I'm actually over it, eh? Like, I'm dead set over the mo- moving, bro. Um, okay, so, yeah, you, you, you moved to us to Australia for the rest of the year. Yep. Did you guys stay on Sunny Coast? Nah, so we, um, we actually, we moved to Tenworth, bro, mm. for, um, oh no, that was a year after. No, we went to Terrigal, bro. Sorry, okay. so we, we went to Terrigal, mm. um, went to Terrigal, played the year there. Then um, I remember pre-season, like that following pre-season hit, I think we went terrible that year. Mm. Um, but the following pre-season hit and um, bro, we had to do a split pre-season. Yeah. So like all the Aussies um, had to move to Kayama and we pretty much trained there. There was about like 10 of us. Then Not a bad spot though, Kayama. Yeah, Just yeah no, it, was, it was cracker, bro. But um, yeah, there's about 10 of us training in um, Kayama. Then there was all the NZ boys still training at like the facilities and that. Okay. And um, we pretty much done a split pre-season up to January. Mm. Then we all moved to Tenworth, bro. All right. And um, Were you filthy? You didn't get the Sunny Coast Resort? No, nah, bro. We got, um, we got Goldie, man. Goldie's all right. Well, oh, but you were in the... Bro, oh. It's still stories coming, trust me. Really? Okay. Yes. Tell, <laughs> let, <laughs> let us know. Let us know. <laughs> then, um, yeah, we moved to we moved to um, Tenworth, done pre-season there. Then that's when um, we moved to Terrigal. Yep. Uh, for round one. Then we had to go to... They moved everyone up. Do you remember how they moved everyone up to uh, Queensland? Mm. So we moved up to Queensland, stayed... Um, what would we say? Um, I don't know, stayed with all the teams, but we were on the we were based on the Goldie Q1 or something, maybe I don't know. Nah, it was next to the um, oh, it was next to a golf course, Palms Meadow or something. Yeah, okay, the yep. resort there. But um, yeah, we had like us Raiders, Bulldogs, Souths, and Para there. Mm. And bro, it was so awkward because like you'd verse the team, yeah, and um, you come back and see each other, and you're just like, oh man, this is like That's, weird. That is so weird. That then, um, bro, we pretty much halfway got through the year. Then we moved to, uh, Warriors moved to Seoul, mm. but in surfers. But they didn't realise Seoul behind it is Cavill Ab. <laughs> oh. <laughs> bro. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Yeah, so, um, yeah, 2021 <laughs> was a pretty pretty much a big year. It's like, we we're, were playing then, um, yeah, going out and that. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> It was a good time. Like, yeah. It was a good time. Bonding. Fo- yeah, bonding. But yeah, footy footy was pretty tough. But yeah. then um, after after we done, you had the opportunity to go back to um, to go back to New Zealand. Mm. But then they gave us a, for 2022, they gave us a date we had to be back. So it could have been, I don't know, 10th of November, you have to be at training. Mm. Yep. So, but when the, like when the year finished, they said you can stay out Seoul for another six weeks mm. then you have to find your own place up in brizzy your own like um accommodation because we yep. set stones like we've got to stay there for the whole year um it's pretty much you got to find your own place just so like you we're not always together because bro like i love the boys but it just got you, too yeah, much you yeah. got to get out of yeah there. you got to get away from 100 like, percent. you got to you're from. having dinner with them then freaking seeing them the next day like just constantly always seeing them bro yeah which is like it's mad but then you just bro, you just need your own space well, sometimes. Not, like it's it gets too it's too much it's too much yeah bro. it's, it's too much. way too much but um yeah so they said like you have to be at training before the 10th of november mm. but you got the soul for another six weeks after the comms finished <laughs> so <laughs> how many boys took that up 
Uh, majority of them. <laughs> oh, far out. <laughs> off season was big, bro. Wow. Off-season. It was a big off season. Yeah. Wow. It was. Um, oh, this would have been Walshy. Yeah, Walshy, Kane Evans. Um, Whoopsie. Bro, we had, yeah. Now we know. Now we know. <laughs> we, yeah, we had. Bro, we had. Um, yeah, off season was good. It yeah. was mad. <laughs> Loved it with the boys. Hey, mate, again. Staying, mate, staying in Service Paradise paid for. Yeah. Not bad. Mainly out the soul, bro. We we're like level friggin' 15. It's yeah. like, I don't know. There's like 30 levels there. Yeah. And like all the boys like were level 15, 16. One of the boys was like level friggin' 28 or something. Oh, that's mad. So, um, yeah, no, it was definitely sick, bro. And then like it, surfers is like so dirty, but like it was just so convenient because like literally our hotel's here and Cabo Ave's right there. So it was just like yeah, bang, bang. Like it's, just, it, Surfers used to be the spot in... And yeah. now, it's, now it's mainly for tourists and like if you're hard clubbing. Yeah. Um, it, it, so it used to be surfaced, then it moved to Broadie. Yeah. Now it's moving to Burley. Yeah. And it'll probably move maybe south again, but, or it could go back up the other way. Yeah. Um, well, they just surfaced, opened that club, that all day club like or something. 11 a.m. or something. Yeah. It's weird, man. Uh, that is not like, there is not a single part of me that wants to be in a club. At, yeah. At, 10 a.m. in the morning. It has to, bro. It has to be underground. Like, proper underground. Even country. that, it's just like, yeah. I'd rather be if look if I'm kicking on, one of the boys' houses, like, yeah, backyard. No, definitely not. In the in the pits of the in the belly of the beast in surface, bro. Imagine just walking like around like, and you How just about? got people coming out like of that club just oh, at like 10:30, just bro. looking dusty as like a little freaking yuck ugh. gremlin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So. You know, we've already spoken about the incredible. So 2022, though, you, um, well, it was your best year, but also round seven, you have a record 70, 10, 70 to 10 loss. <laughs> what was that like to experience that? Because that is wild stuff. Yeah, so 2022, that's when um, we've been through some coaches and we, I think we were on to our third coach. We had Brownie that year. So mm. we had Stephen Kearney, 2021. Mm. Then we had Toddy Payton that took over when he got sacked. Yeah. Then 2022 was um, Brownie. Yeah. And um, at the start of preseason, um, he kind of pulled me aside and just said, mate, like, it's either pull your head in or piss off. Yeah, okay. And I was just like, yeah. I was just like, well, fucking, I need to start doing something here, right? Because yeah. like, I just can't be doing this. I need to make a living. But then also need to, yeah. I'm here to play football, not to freaking party. Yeah. But, um, yeah, 2022 was, yeah, he pulled my head in. I remember I played cup for the first six rounds, I think, or five rounds. Mm. And Brownie always said to me, he goes, mate, once you get your defense right, I promise you you'll be in the team. Mm. And I was playing golf, bro, and, like, I had a call from Brownie. Like, and I said, to you, I was playing with Jack. I was like, oh, bro, he's calling me. Like, what the hell? And um, I answered. I was like, oh, Brownie, what's up? He goes, mate, my bloody told you. You're in the side next week. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, sweet mate, thanks. And I was just like, all right. Um, then yeah, we Anzac game, bro. Anzac game, um, Warriors versus Storm. It's probably one of the best games, eh? Mm. Like just the whole lead up to it, um, walking out, minute silence, um, like the Anzac tradition, just tribute. Um, Amy Park, just dead set silent. Um, it's all black lights. You got the um, the army guys there. Then you have the fireworks, bro. It's just I don't know how to explain it, man. Mm. It's just it, the lead up's crazy to yeah. the game. Yeah. Um, but in the game, when you're looking up at the school yeah, board, in what the was game, that feeling? So, bro, I got <coughs> injured actually at halftime. So yeah. we lost. So at halftime, bro, it was it was ten six. Yeah. Oh. Then so technically, I kind of lost ten six. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So. It was 10-6. I remember um, I jumped up for a ball and done my MCL, bro. And I honestly, oh, like, MCLs are so weird, bro. They feel like you, like, pop your ACL, man. It's just mm. fucking weird. And I remember I was wigging out, but then, um, yeah, I don't know, it just all started crumbling for the boys. Like, after half time, mm. they just storm just put freaking 70 points on us. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. But you, you had your best year that year on the field. Um what do you remember the most from that year on the field? Um, oh, bro, Brownie just said to me, he's like, mate, you just 
go do you. I remember he used to literally go around and like speak to all the boys before the games. He'd come up to me and just go look at me and I'd just be like, just do you, man. Mm. And I reckon that's probably when I play my best football when um, I don't get like a free reign, but like when I can get, just go up there, oh, go out there and just um, pretty much just play my game, just do me. Mm. Um, that's when I was playing lock second row. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, I was, I, was in, I was loving football that year. And then obviously at the end of the year, you had your um, incident, um, you know, with a, a fight. What, what, I guess, I don't want to go into detail because it seemed, you know, obviously there was a 16-year-old mm. and all that kind of stuff. But basically, you were charged. Um, I guess, what did you learn from such a negative experience, you think? Yeah, bro. Um, obviously, <laughs> bro, my uncle, so one of my uncles came, like, we went to um, my auntie's house in port um, just for a family catch-up. And my uncle... Um, he, he does drink, but, like, he never says, like, let's go out. Mm. And so he said to one of my mm. other uncles, he goes, oh, like, should we just go out for a couple of drinks? And mm. we just both looked at each other and just, like, well, we don't get this, like, opportunity much. Like, we, mm. may, as, we may as well. Mm. Then, um, yeah, obviously shit went down, like, freaking it happened. Mm. But um, didn't really think much of it. Then, yeah, everything started, like, crumbling. Obviously got charged. Um, I was, bro, I didn't, like, I was afraid I wasn't going to make bail, so... Um, I was up in uh, Goldie. I was playing golf again. I got a call saying, like, mate, like, dad called me and said, um, you bloody, we, we got to fly down to Manly, bro. You're about to get charged with um, GBH, which is the worst, yeah, the worst assault. Then I was just like, oh, what the hell? Mm. Then um, I and, and just, so it, it's from a fight. We don't have to go into detail, but it's from a fight. Um, no, oh, no, nah. it's not from a fight. It's okay, just, it's all good. Yeah, it's, it's all good. It's the media, man. They just they love freaking stirring stuff up. It's like, it's so stupid, bro. Like, mm. just the media got a hold of it, and just you know the media, they just mm. freaking bloody um, make stories out of nothing. But yeah, it's not from a fight. But um, yeah, bro. So got charged with GBH, and I was afraid I wasn't going to make bail. Mm. And um, that's, that's grievous bodily harm. Yeah, grievously yep. bodily yep. harm. So, um, which is yeah, the worst assault. Mm. Then, um, yeah, I, I remember I had a flight. Literally got told on the Wednesday, and we booked a flight for um, Thursday morning at six a.m. Then I had to drive to um, Manly Police Station and get arrested and go into the holding cell, bro. Mm. And um, yeah, I was just praying to God I got bail because yeah, it's. Yeah, it's not a nice place to be, bro. Absolutely. I remember going to the holding cell, and um, the to be honest, the police officer was actually he was um yeah he was actually very good to me. Um, I, as shit as it sounds, he actually tried to make it somewhat um comforting mm. for me. But um, yeah, once you're in them holding cells and you freaking yeah after such a good year, yeah, it's uh, you can sit on that silver seat, cold as, and yeah, all you can see is freaking three wars and bars in front of you um yeah it's not it's not nice but um yeah i i think it affected me the most with just the family and just like friends and that yep. just with all the media coming out and um yeah them just saying every story twisting it up and just like i try to tell mum and like my family just don't worry about media but like when it's coming out everywhere on the newspapers and you've got them friends coming to you um it does take a toll and um yeah i've i reckon i'd through that whole preseason, you tried not to think about it and keep your mind off it, but going to sleep each night was, um, yeah, it's on the back of your mind and mm. you just freaking, you, you don't know what's got to happen. So, yep. um, yeah, played, uh, done all preseason, um, done everything, pleaded not guilty. Then, um, yeah, we had to go to court on January the 23rd, I think it was, mm. after the Dragons game. And, um, yeah, just all happened from there. Just yeah. And what um, was the end result for you? So I pleaded guilty. Um, mm. Pleaded guilty to it. Um, some stuff happened, like in court, where I was just like, "Oh, what like, like even like everyone's just like, what the hell? Like, mm. this is just so stupid." But um, the worst part is, I didn't want a criminal record, mm. so because I knew if I got the criminal record, it would it would have fucked me. Yeah, absolutely traveling, but also with footy. Mm. And um, yeah, didn't didn't get the criminal record. Yeah, that's friggin' done all that, got all that done. Um, ended up pleading guilty. Um, 
So no criminal record. So with the, just so, and people, and again, we don't have to go into detail, but sometimes what happens is they say, look, if you plead guilty, you get this. If you say not guilty, we're going to, this is going to last, we're going all the way, like this yeah. is going all the way. Pretty much. And so you that. essentially have yeah. a decision of, I can cop this medicine yeah. that may be way less than the medicine that I cop. Yeah. They get a can they get this they're happy you're happy yeah. and you walk so away that's, that's what happened so yeah. i have the two options um so we had an nrl guy there mm. that was like listening to all of it um but yeah i had the option of i could play guilty this is what happens mm. we still got to fight for no uh criminal record mm. um so then i had the obviously don't play guilty um and just fight it which um i was looking down that track but then also i was just like you know what like I just want to get this over and done with. Eh? I don't want to get up on the stand, talk, just because, like, um, yeah, I would, bro, I would have crumbled, like, dead set. Mm. Not, like, crumbled in a bad way. I just, I remember I'd never been so quiet in my life, like, just so intimidated. Um, once you're in that courtroom, it's, mm. yeah, it's pretty intimidating. I remember I had, um, had newspaper writers, like, literally, I was sitting on these seats and they were on the other side and you can just hear it, um, her computer just typing Type everything he was saying. I'm just like, like freaking hell. Like yeah. everything, yeah, it just was so quiet, bro. I just, yeah, I, I didn't know what to say, bro. I was lost of words, eh? And mm. um, we said like, if we, f if we fought it, I just said, uh, I would honestly don't think I can speak, eh? Like I just, mm. I'd be I think also like, if you're fighting it, it's pretty hard to get a contract yeah, with a club if, if they don't know what is going to be the end result. Yeah. Um, well, they, bro, they could adjourn it and then freaking happens or not. Yep. So I, I just took the medicine, bro, um, pleaded guilty. Um, my lawyer, Paul McGo, he's, yeah, legend. Mm. And I don't ever want to see him again, but <laughs> that, nah, dead set legend. Yeah. But um, yeah, Paul McGo, um, yeah, done his job, got no, uh, didn't get convicted. Mm. Um, and that was it, bro. It was yeah. just freaking, I was in what and out. Do, eh? What do you reckon? Uh, What's a positive, like I know it's such a negative experience, yeah. but sometimes, not sometimes, for me personally, even though when you're in the bad experience, when you get further away from it, you look back and you go, I actually took a lot out of that. I yeah. really did. What do you reckon you took out of that? Um, bro, honestly, you find, like you actually truly find out who your real friends are, eh? Mm. Like, um, obviously the media and shit, they, they, can, they can mix stuff up. Like, they can go say whatever they want. Um, but yeah that you find out who your real friends are then um mm. yeah it's just bro, i don't think i've ever actually been out past 12 o'clock anymore eh? like it's just yeah nothing good happens past 12. yeah i was like obviously i might be like later on but like bro it's just yeah it's mm. not worth it um had my partner there with me she copped the yeah she copped it for a bit eh? yeah, it was pretty hard like if i was feeling bad um just pretty much offload everything onto her and um mm. yeah she copped it on the chin so <laughs> it was actually yeah i've been dating her for a year and a bit now and um when it all came out i haven't met a family i didn't meet a family i was just like oh man like your family's got to think i'm criminals yeah be, bro like this was proper everywhere mm. like when the news broke out and um yeah i pretty much just yeah pretty much if i felt like shit, i'd go to her yeah and just um offload everything onto her yeah so yeah she um supported me all the way and she was yeah by my side and she knew how um Rat I was, but mm. yeah, honestly, you, you actually find out who your true friends are, and um, man, it's just something so small that just blew up. But fuck, yeah. it is what it is now. I guess any time where you're feeling like you, you know, you feel like oh, getting a bit carried away or whatever, it'll be a really good lesson for you. Go, you know what? I'm just not even going to put myself yeah close to that position, and I'm going to focus in on footy kind of thing. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. So um, yeah, I can. I don't want to make excuses, but that's, yeah, that was probably a big part why I didn't have my best year last mm. year. I was focusing on other stuff outside of footy then. Yeah. But also we're saying that it did make me realise how much um, there is than just football. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's obviously um, played a big part of why I moved um, to the Doggies yeah. as well. Um, so you're at the Bulldogs now. What's it been like? Um, we because I, I actually, so I... <coughs> Well, I don't go for I haven't been for a while, but I go for a run um, around Cronulla. Yeah. And I was, well, I happened to be at the Sand Dunes and I saw you boys train on the nah, Sand Dunes. I wasn't there. You weren't there yet. I wasn't there, bro. Mate. 
the boys were hurting. Yeah, the boys I know. were hurting. Bro, Cody, man, he um, his first week was he went back a week early, and I had to go back the week after. Bro, he said it was one of the worst sessions. He reckons his calf was so sore. Like <laughs> four weeks later, bro, he was because I rocked up not when you were doing the session when the boys were walking back from the set. <laughs> bro, their heads were so angry, <laughs> so angry. So funny. Yeah, so no, nah, the funny. boys um, The boys said it was hard. So yeah. I actually haven't done it in sand dune. Bro, but the worst part is like, I'm proper so bad on sand. Like, oh, really? I'm like, bro, just luggage on sand, bro. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I haven't done. So they done for the first three weeks, they done the sand dunes and mm. I came on the fourth week. So yeah, yeah, I missed out. Laughing, on the laughing. Um, what's what's a, the preseason been like for you? Are you injury free? Are you, you know, yeah, touch wood. I've uh, been injury free, but yeah. um, no, it's good, man. I'm loving it. Eh? It's they do. Um, it's just like, bro, the whole system. So Ciro made the system up at um, Penrith um, with all the defensive um, system and just everything. So, bro, literally every, everything's the exact same. Mm. Um, they train at Belmore. Um, we used to train at Mount Smart. Um, bro, I know when I first rocked up, bro, I know half the office staff. Oh, sorry. So you're saying it's the same as Webby's system? Yeah. So, um, so when they were all at Penrith, yep. their defensive system, um, so def- uh, Penrith defensive system, Warriors defensive system, and Bulldog defensive are system okay. are the same because yeah. it came from Ciro. Ciro made it. The, oh, he made the system. Yeah, he made the system. Oh, up. wow, that's interesting. So, oh, um, wow. yeah, I, bro, honestly, it feels like I haven't moved clubs. I actually, I think once i hit trials it'll probably and i put on the bulldogs jersey it'll be like oh like yeah it's actually probably sinks in yeah but, um yeah bro it's i rocked up and i know pretty much um most uh, half of the office staff which makes it easy and then like also the boys like you just know the boys throughout footy football, players, are then, footy players yeah, yeah like you can just bond with them easily yeah but no man loving it eh? yeah dead set loving it i was and- has it, anyone stood out for you that you've been like, oh shit, like? Yeah, Hughesy. They they got this um, Sam Hughes. Um, I think he played a couple of games last year, but mm. bro, he's like a he's like a big Terminator man. Oh really? But he's like he's one of them guys um, that just like always does something that cracks the boys up. Oh, okay. But like we all love him. Yeah. But he's just bro, he's a freak. Yeah. He's dead set been training the house down, man. Yeah. He's um, <laughs> been killing it, bro. Um, what position do you play in the forwards or? Ah uh, yeah, lock second row, bro. Lock second row. Maybe a bit of centers if I have to, but um, um nah. far okay. So, who else has kind of impressed you with it? Because it's such a, the dogs is such an interesting squad. Because like, there's so you, when you look at it, you go okay, all most other clubs <coughs> I could predict one to seventeen, one yeah. to thirteen most likely. Dogs, I genuinely don't know what that one to thirteen is going to be. Yeah. So um. No, nah, it's good, man. We've freaking been training the house down, eh? Mm. Um, it's it's been hard to tell. Like I can't say. sarah has been saying like um, they're way ahead of schedule than they were last year. Mm. But like, um, bro, there's 17 other teams um, yeah. out there saying like they're training the best. Like yeah. until you actually come to games. Mm. But um, yeah, I actually can't really say much of yeah. like what they done last year because yeah. obviously I wasn't there. But no, nah, all the boys are gelling good, eh? What's the culture feel like? Because you've been at the Roosters when they won the Premiership and obviously the Warriors last year culture was crazy. What's the culture like? No, nah, it's mad, bro. Like we had our Chrissy party, 28 people were there. It's just like, bro, all the boys um, like just hang out with each other. Like even off, off days, like we got boys um, down at Cronulla right now mm. um, surfing that, like eight of them. Um, the culture's good, man. I was, Siri actually told me um, the other day, like he, this is probably the tightest culture that he's actually seen. Mm. Um, he just said like all the boys are gelling real good. Um, he's loving it. So no, it's good, man. We just, yeah, obviously we've been um, the first block of preseason before December. That's just like obviously some football, but like mm. just getting K's in your legs, getting you ready. But mm. now that's January's hit around. Um, we started last week. Um, done a couple of te- like just testing, but yeah. uh, now we started into football, bro. So it's an exciting part of preseason now. And right, um, it's only a few weeks away now. Oh, bro, it's crazy. It's gone that fast, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it does help when like you come back later in pre in um, preseason. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah bro, it's honestly flew away. They, those first two weeks of preseason, like the literal first two weeks, are the depths of hell. Oh, bro, you look at yourself in the mirror and just like, I hate this. Like, bro. what is doing? Um, is there any young fellows that have really you've been like, oh, he's you know maybe a, pl- a player that's played one or two games or hasn't played in a row that you've been really impressed with? Um, yeah, there's a couple. Uh, 
We've got this winger, Jarrell. He played a couple... Is like he the three. union boy? Yeah, the union, the union he boy. He was in yeah. sevens. He, yeah. bro, he's a big boy, yeah. man. Skelton? Like, yeah. Skelton? Yeah. yeah he's big a, boy. He's a big boy. Like, not like like fat big. Like, yeah. just muscly big, bro. Like, just, mm. it's just a big unit. He's, um, yeah, he's good, bro. He, obviously, he's still trying to learn the mm. game, but um, played a couple of games last year. And, um, yeah, it's probably the best thing. He had got that experience and he's starting to pick up on league now. But, yeah, bro, he's he's big. He's good. Yeah. Um, What's it been like seeing Critter move around? Nah, he's good, man. He's Critter's Critter. He, um, bro, I saw a video in the changing room where he was doing the siren on his speaker. Oh, bro, it's um, all the boys want to take that freaking critter? siren out, eh? Holy. No, but it's mad, bro. He like he brings the energy into training. I know he's the no fucking yeah, deliver. He's um, bro, he's just he's. It's crazy how young he is and like what he's already done. No, like for the game, bro. It's just freaking crazy. But no, nah, he's um, he's a legend, bro. He. It brings out the energy and you can see his um experience on the field if you if you had <laughs> odds on who brings more no brother fox or critter 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 brings more no yeah no way bro, maybe no. fox is a veteran now so he's foxy, chilled. no foxy um he does bring energy but like critters just <laughs> really yeah. holy heck is yeah, <laughs> that he, is actually he crazy he takes that speaker everywhere bro and that little button he presses <laughs> oh, right. just Con bro, he went 10 minutes straight yesterday. All the boys are like, yeah, he's got to stop soon. Just kept going, kept going, kept going. <laughs> but like, bro, you just, yeah, it's mad. He gets all the boys up for training and, um, you know, you you have a tough day and you come in the next day, you're just like, fuck, I don't know how my legs are going to move. But, and then um, gets you up again. Yeah, he gets you up again. I tell you what, if I'm being honest, if that was there when I was around the Bronx, it's getting thrown <laughs> over the highway immediately by one of the senior players <laughs> yeah no nah, it's bro we didn't used to actually even allowed to have music in the 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 um gym when we lifted weights oh, stuff like that, that, we had this guy called dan baker and he'd be like we had to fucking lift weights not at a nightclub and so it was just a it was sweaty stinking large men just oh. going hard yeah, in the gym music bro, yeah oh, look i'm a music guy i'm a music guy but this was just like so old school bro it was yeah. so old school um yeah but like it's funny how you know, when from the outside looking in, you, you go, oh, that would be so annoying. But sometimes you need, even if it is annoying for the first 30 seconds, then eventually you laugh and then eventually it cracks yeah, the ice it. and then, then yeah. you're sweet. But he, no, nah, he came in on day one. He was, um, yeah, he's ball full of energy, man. Yeah. But like all the boys, all the boys are legends, eh? Like, yeah. Um, it just makes it so much easier moving to a different club. Like, yeah. And just like the boys are just, yeah, honestly, they, I, I feel like I've been with them for about three years. Like, yeah, wow. Like ev everyone even says it. Even Sarah's like, I feel like you boys have been like together for like five years. Yeah. You know? Like you're just bonding real good. And um, I think that's a big part of um, how you play on the field as well. Mm. Like bonding off the field and just like 100%. being around each other. Because um, if you can get them close connections and um, yeah, you'll do anything for anyone. Man, I can't wait to see Critter play this year. I cannot wait to see yeah, what he does because I don't, I don't think people realise how athletic he is. Like yeah. he's a freak, bro, an actual freak. Um, I say so for yourself personally. I guess what is the goal for 2000? If everything goes perfectly, you know, what's the goal for 2024? Um, yeah, obviously, um, everyone goes. I want to win a grand final, but it's the small stuff that leads up to it. So um, my first goal is obviously. Get in the starting spot. If it's second row, obviously um, the lock. I, I really want that lock starting spot. But um, I know if I don't get it, um, I can push for that second row spot. Mm. Um, then just switch around in games. But um, yeah, getting that starting spot, playing um, good consistent footy like I was in 2022. Mm. Um, getting my name thrown around for Origin. And um, I know if I can um, do me and keep playing good football, um, hopefully... Yeah, get the call up for Origin. Um, yeah, I've, it's probably a dream to play for the Blues. Um, yep. It's just, yeah, you, you watch it um, every Wednesday night and, yeah, you just... I know when I watch it, I just always like, man, I want to be out there. Like, I want to be in the battle and, yep. and in the um, tough stuff. So, yeah, hopefully play Origin. Then, um, well, firstly, I want to yeah, make the All-Stars, sorry, mm. um, Indigenous team. Yep. Um, that's a mad week. Um, yeah, honestly, it's it's the best week, eh? Yeah. But, um, yeah, following through... Is it in New Zealand again this year or is it... No, in Townsville. Townsville? Yeah. That'll be sick. Bro, it's honestly so sick up there. Yeah. It gets packed and, um, 
the whole week going into your culture mm. um, and just, yeah, going out in the community. It's just sick, man. It's yeah. such a good week. All the boys getting around each other. It's so, um, yeah, it's so cool. I reckon they've really nailed the format of Maldi versus Indigenous rather than Indigenous versus World yeah, All-Stars. Because you've got two people playing for more, you know? 100%. And, um, yeah, bro, it's, it's actually a real powerful way. It's, um, it's so sick. I'd, honestly, if I could play that every year, like, mm. I will. Yeah. So, um, no, nah, it's cool, man. But, um, yeah, obviously, yeah, all them small goals and um, <coughs> hopefully if I can achieve them. Um, if I'm lucky enough, get the call up for Origin. Um, yep. Then after Origin, yeah, obviously try and make top eight. If not, if we can um, do better, then make top four. Um, play semi-final footballs again. And, mm. um, yeah, obviously everyone has that goal of winning the grand final, but you got to um, do small stuff to um, get there. Yeah. Now ask all the boys this. Favourite rapper of all time? Travis Scott, bro. What? <laughs> <laughs> that is a first. Did look, throw you off? Look, it threw me off because... I'm an old head for one, um, but like I actually don't even see him as a rapper. Bro, I want to go to his concert, man. Because I think he's like beat selection and his unique like kind of like sci-fi trap is hectic. It's hectic. But yeah, okay. I, I like the uniqueness. Uh, bro, I would like dead set. I said to my missus, if he comes to Aussie, I'm yeah. paying whatever Everyone. to go to one of his concerts. Wow, well, okay. Okay, I, I was the same with The weekend, And he uh, yeah. postponed his... Oh, that hurts. Bro. So we actually... I was trying to get the tickets on on the pod, like whilst the podcast was live. Because you know yeah. how tickets sell out in like two seconds. And he ended up postponing anyway. I don't even know when he's coming. I don't even know when he's coming. That so thanks, sucks. Weekend. I know you're a listener to this podcast, bro. It's really disappointing. Um, nah, I can't wait. Uh, okay, Travis Scott. His last album, What do you? what's better? Astroworld? Was it Astroworld? Yeah, Astroworld. Or his last album? Uh, nah, Astroworld takes it over, bro. Takes it? Yeah. That is bro, a classic. I, did say, I was watching his documentary mm. and hands down, I was just like, <laughs> I had the, I was like, do you know what? I actually shouldn't play football. I want to become a rapper. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. oh, that's the best. Um, favorite movie of all time? Um, I'll oh, probably Taken. Taken, One, two, yeah, man, that yeah. is a look. It, you know, Taken two and three. It's a messed up freaking like movie, but like it's so it's cool. so good. Like when he gets the phone call and he's like, yeah. I've got this special set of skills, and then he's yeah. like, Good luck, oh, man, yeah, it's great. Cool, bro. And I'm trying to think like it really. It felt like the first of its kind. I hadn't really. Yeah. And, and look, I'm sure there's some movie head out there that's like, Bro, this has been done before. So fair enough. But to me. That I had never main, seen, yeah. yeah, I'd never seen a movie like that. 100%. Um, or just, I don't know, it felt, it felt like the first. It, it kind of feels real, bro. But like, yeah. it does happen though. Mm. But like, it's just like so messed up. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just it's fucked up, man. 100%. Like, it's such a sick movie. Sickest movie. Um, mate, thank you so much for coming on, bro. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck in uh, 2024. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Boom.